Today we'll be talking about the endocrine system. The endocrine system has a lot of organs associated with it. There's feedback mechanisms that feedback with the pituitary and the, and the hypothalamus. Uh, and so we'll be talking about the various organs and there's so many of them that we're going to divide up into two groups. Uh, we'll start with the pituitary and then we'll end up with some reproductive organs on the second component. Enjoy! The endocrines or the endocrine system. We'll divide this up into two parts. The testis will actually be in the second part, but the adrenal would be in the first part. Now, what we want to do today is to gain a greater appreciation for the diversity of functions of the endocrine system, the different organs in the endocrine system, and to recognize the different organs, unique features of organs and cells that make up the endocrine system. Now, there's different types of systems. There's a paracrine system where one cell affects another cell. There's a synaptic system like to use neurotransmitters for one cell to directly interact with another cell. But the endocrine system has one cell producing hormone going through the bloodstream uh, to affect target cells at some distance away. And we'll see those uh, here in the hypothalamus uh, where you have releasing factors come in here, go into the bloodstream to cause cells here to secrete hormones that then go in the bloodstream and cause other uh, target organs to be secrete hormones and then that feeds back on the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland. So we can see that here. Here's the pituitary gland, one of the major glands. Uh, it's really located uh, just at the base of the brain so it could be facilitate the neuroendocrine uh, system or synergy. So in the hypothalamus we have cells that uh, neurons that produce releasing factors that get into a portal system that goes here to the pars uh, distalis in through here. Uh, and so we have uh, target cells in the hypothalamus uh, uh, degenerating cells in the hypothalamus and target cells uh, in, this, in the pars distalis. Hypothalamus producing and releasing factors that go through the portal vessels that go into here. And then uh, from the pars distalis you have uh, two types of cells, three types of cells. You have acetophils and a basophils and a chromophobes is another type that they have. And each of those produce hormones that affect a target organ, here is the testis, the thyroid, the ACTH, uh, the adrenal, uh, the mammary gland, or all tissues in general with growth hormone. And then these feed back into the pituitary or into the hypothalamus. Uh, there's other system in the, in the anterior pituitary, in the posterior pituitary, I should say, uh, pars nervosa, where you have neurons located in the hypothalamus project down into this region and they themselves are producing the hormones oxytocin and, and ADH. So in the endocrine system you get one cell produces a hormone, goes through the bloodstream and affects a target cell uh, at some distance away and that target uh, cell may produce hormones that, that inhibit um, uh, further uh, stimulation uh, of, of that of that cell time. So here we see the pituitary, here's the pars nervosa, pars distalis, pars intermedia, uh, infradibulum stalk, and the pars tuberalis, the tube that goes around uh, through here. Uh, in the um, pars distalis, right in through here, or the anterior pituitary, uh, you have the different cells that we have here, the chromophobes that did not like stain, acetophils that are red, and the basophils uh, that have a bluish uh, type plat uh, cytoplasm. Uh, in the pars intermedia, right in through here, uh, it, we have this colloid uh, type uh, stuff, which, um, which is a remnant of the development from the two different sources. This came down from a nerve, uh, nervous tissue of the brain, and this came in from the roof of the mouth. So uh, again, we can see the pars distalis, the pars nervosa, the pars intermedia.
Uh, and so in these two slides, the pars distalis, uh, the pars intermedia, uh, and the pars nervosa. And so these are really nerve uh, axon endings with pituitocytes uh, inside there to uh, support them. We can see those. And if you look at some of these, you can see one right here, uh, but there's others around too. These are herring bodies that are in there. And if you remember that the nerves up in the hypothalamus uh, send their processes down into uh, the, the pars nervosa that we see there, and they store their contents in little swellings in through there. You see one there, one there, uh, different ones. Uh, in fact, here you can see a drawing of one of those. It shows you the herring body, which is the hormones that's produced by the neurons and stored here uh, to be released uh, into the bloodstream uh, whenever appropriate. And here you can see with a different stain, you can see a host of these uh, herring bodies in through there. There's another big one right here that we see there. Uh, and of course, uh, the hormones inside there would be ADH or oxytocin that would be in those ones. Here we can see that this particular stain uh, facilitates you to see uh, the host of herring bodies uh, that are located uh, in the uh, uh, pars nervosa. From the pars nervosa, we come to this colloid material. Here is the pars intermediate. The pars intermediate uh, produces uh, some hormone that may be related to coloration. I'm not sure exactly what uh, hormones are being produced uh, there in the inter intermediate. And then the pars uh, distalis uh, has either some cells that are very red and some that's kind of blue and some that do not like stain at all. Uh, here we can see uh, kind of bluish and reddish uh, cells here, but with a certain stain, this stain, uh, you can see the blue cells very nicely in relation to the, into the, uh, so the acidophils and basophils. These are basophils uh, here and acidophils uh, there. So uh, the next organ that's influenced by the pituitary that we'll talk about, uh, there's a thyroid and also there is adrenal. Uh, we will talk about the parathyroid hormone at the next one, but right now we're going to start with the adrenal. The adrenal, adrenal, means near renal, near the kidney that we see there. And uh, the adrenal has a capsule. You can see the capsule around there. Then it has a cortex uh, and a medulla. So adrenal cortical hormone only affects the cortical region. The cortical region itself has different layers. It has the zona glomerulosa that we see here underneath the capsule, capsule up here, glomerulosa. And then the zona uh, fasciculata uh, that goes here. And you can see the, where the sinuses uh, run in through there. And these would have uh, fenestrated capillaries. And then uh, there is a, a zona uh, reticularis, zona reticularis. And then the dark staining area in through there is the medulla. And the medulla will release um, epinephrine and norepinephrine. But it's the cortical region here that uh, is influenced by ACTH. So you can see the different region, the capsule, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, reticularis, uh, and the medulla. So we can see those again in one of the slides that we will look at, the capsule at the top, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, because you see all these vesicles there. Uh, and then reticularis and the medulla. Now, these different areas produce different hormones. You have uh, mineral corticoids produced by the glomerulosa. You have glucocorticoids produced uh, by the fasciculata, and then, and then uh, androgens produced uh, also by the fasciculata, and likewise, uh, androgens are produced by the reticularis as well. So you have the capsule of the adrenal, you have the cortex all the way down to here, and then you have the medulla. So uh, cortex, medulla, and in the medulla you have the vein. So there's a central vein right in through there, and we can see the vein in through here. We can see a higher mag of that central vein, 
and you can even see in the abdomen tissue uh, the big bundles of, of smooth muscle endothelial cells lining this vein so uh, blood would percolate down from the capsule down through these different layers of the cortex through the medulla and ultimately go into this uh, central vein or maxillary vein ultimately to to exit the adrenal another important gland is the thyroid the thyroid has follicles and that's what we see here follicles uh, around each one of those and inside the follicle it has a colloid and here we can see colloid mixture which is thyroglobulin material that's stored extracellularly and then there's capillaries in fact it's said that the uh, thyroid had the highest uh, ratio of blood vessels to tissue uh, of any organ of course you're, not, you're discounting the, the colloid uh, in that calculations but uh, later we'll talk about the parathyroid but right now we we'll talk about the follicles of the thyroid now uh, the follicular cells that's in here and here we can see the follicular cells that produce the colloid uh, it produces a colloid and in fact it phagocytizes a colloid to make thyroid hormone and this part requires iodine the actual making of the colloid does not require iodine but it does to make thyroglobulin so here we see a host of follicles in the thyroid in through here uh, uh, sometimes we see some other cells between there but here's the follicular cells um, parafollicular cell right here and then the colloid so we can see the follicular cells and the vasculature the rich vasculature uh, around uh, the follicular cells we can see the follicular cells here uh, and it's flicker cells which are going to be producing a thyroid hormone so remember that you come from the hypothalamus down to the um, uh, through the portal vessel to the pituitary and from the pituitary you go through the main bloodstream to the thyroid and the thyroid uh, produces a thyroid a hormone which then uh, affects target uh, cells also the thyroid hormone feeds back uh, to the brain as well now, in addition to the flicker cells, we also have a paraflicker cell, a cell that's in between the follicles. And we can see one of those cells right here very nicely. And, and the flickers, uh, paraflicker cells, they produce calcitonin. Now, remember when we talk about bone formation and calcium regulation, calcitonin, uh, what it does, it removes the osteoclast ruffled border uh, which prevents reabsorption of bone. So calcitonin reduces the reabsorption of bone by removing the osteoclast ability to be able to digest bone. And so uh, today what we have covered is the pituitary gland. We also covered the thyroid gland uh, and the adrenal gland. We will continue with other ones uh, uh, later on.